the last time I entered this F4 series, it was so bad I ended up quitting iRacing for nearly a year. Recently though, I have returned to the sim and I've been enjoying my Formula Ford races, so I thought maybe it was about time to give the Formula 4 another chance. So today, I'm going back to face my demons at Brands Hatch. Will it bring out the best in me or will it just bring on another meltdown? Let's find out. Here we go then, the lights are green and we are underway for 20 minutes at Brands Hatch, starting from P9 on a grid of 18, so slap bang in the middle as we approach Paddock Hill Bend for the first time. I'm going to have to hug the inside line because I've got Francois Delu to my outside, Delu started alongside me on the fifth row of the grid, and there's a big cloud of smoke ahead, it looks like we've lost one, two, three drivers at Druid's Hairpin. Oh, look in the rearview mirror, another big accident behind. That was Josh Atkinson crashing out. So we are seeing drivers dropping like flies here in the early stages of Brands Hatch. And in amongst all the drama, I had to surrender another position to Joseph Harvey, who was on my inside through Graham Hill Bend. But we're going to pick up another position through Surtees. That was the pole sitter, Wanjie Choi. So the favourite to win this race out into the greenery on lap one. That has surely dashed Joy's hopes of a victory here. Meanwhile, I've got no idea at all what position I'm in. Delu and Harvey in front both started behind me on the grid. So that's two positions dropped. But I've picked up so many more by way of freebies on this opening lap. So we're in a good place at the moment here. But it's vital that I stick with this pack of three in front, headed by Reese McGrath, who has lost it through Sheen Curve. Both Delu and Harvey had no choice but to take to the grass there. Thankfully, I was just far enough back to react in time and get past all three of them. And you know what? I think I'm up into third position. Matt Diego is leading the race. Robin Chalet in second and me in third. Incredible stuff. Let's go back and check out the replay, starting with the carnage of Druid's hairpin. And it was the number 16 driver, Tom Cock, who locked up his brakes, ran into the back of Sebastian Malcolm, the number one driver, and from there on in, everyone else piling in. Complete mayhem here on lap one. Now, Malcolm had started P3, caught P4, so we've just lost the second row of the grid, and we're going to lose more drivers coming down the hill. This is Josh Atkinson. He obviously picked up some damage in that Druid's hairpin skirmish, and he careered into the barrier. Then we lose the pole sitter. Wanjie Choi throwing it into Certes. Way too hot. The rear steps out, and he has gone. And it's exactly the same mistake from Rhys McGrath through Sheen Curve. He sends cars scattering everywhere. Francois Delu and Joseph Harvey both take into the grass. I get past all three of them and move up into third position. And if you thought that was the end of the lap one carnage, think again. We're now watching the number 14 of James Muller get tagged from behind by Sebastian Malcolm, and that causes even more mayhem. Now, this happened right behind me going through clearways. Muller has lost his rear wing, which makes it incredibly difficult to rejoin, and there are still cars piling in. Well, I came back to this F4 series to see if it was as much carnage as I remember, and the answer is an emphatic yes. Thankfully, though, I managed to avoid it all, and I spent the majority majority of the race in a lonely third position. However, Raphael Magalhães behind was slowly chipping away at my advantage. He finally caught me and overtook me with two laps to go and I wasn't quite quick enough to be able to challenge to snatch that third position back. I gave it a good go. On the very last lap, I got as close as I possibly could coming into clearways for the final time. Magalhães wisely defending, so I'm taking a wider entry in the hope that it gives me more exit speed to challenge. One final attempt to grab a podium here was side by side as we take the checking flag and I just miss out. So a really exciting finish to the race. It couldn't have been any closer. I missed out on a podium by one thousandth of a second. Well, I couldn't leave it like that, could I? I just had to go back and give the race another try. The podium is within grasp here, and I've got an even better opportunity this time. It's a lower strength of field. I'm the number one plate, and I've qualified on the front row of the grid. Can I get the podium this time round? Can I go one better and win the thing? Let's find out. Here we go then. It is very rare that I get to start from the front row in iRacing, but that's where I'm starting from in this second race. However, I didn't get quite as quick a getaway as the pole sitter, Glenn Harrison, and I've also lost a position. Anthony Cece tucking it up the inside through Paddock Hill Bend. So already I'm down to third. I'm going to take the defensive route into Druid's Hairpin just so I can avoid anyone else snatching a position. There was a little bit of contact with Cece as he forced his way up the inside into turn one. I did light 
up the rears ever so slightly when the lights went green. That's what cost me some speed out of the traps. Oh, now I've got Suleiman Al Suleiman on my inside through 30. So we've dropped another position here. I am going backwards and going backwards fast on this opening lap. Right, I need to wake up. I've already lost two positions. I've dropped from second to fourth, and if I'm not careful, I'll lose another one to Josh Atkinson behind. So I take the defensive line into Hawthorne's bend. Meanwhile, the race leader, Glenn Harrison, is already making a break for it. He's opened up a one-second advantage over Anthony CC in second position. Now, Harrison was three-tenths quicker than I was in qualifying. I've got the pace to stick with him if I'm close enough to him, but right now I'm not close enough to him, and I get two tyres out onto the grass through Sheen Curve. Well, that was a big mistake and it's cost me another position. Josh Atkinson didn't need another invitation to snatch that place. And now I've got Roman Ionetta for company behind as well. I just can't find any rhythm on this opening lap. I started on the front row but I've lost three positions. I'm down from second to fifth and it could be sixth now because Ionetta is up the inside coming into Paddock Hill Bend. I've got no choice but to leave him space and even then there's still contact between the two of us. Meanwhile to the left we lost Al Suleiman and I've just about managed to fight off Ionetta as well. Right, let's go back and check out the replay to see what happened to Al Suleiman. He's in third position chasing Anthony CC in second and IA just throws it into Paddock Hill Bend a little bit too hot and the rear steps out. Meanwhile behind I was trying my hardest to fight off Roman Ionetta. I left him loads of room on the inside but he clipped that curb. That sent him out into my path. Thankfully though the contact was light. Right back to the light action halfway through lap two. I'm up into P4 just 0.6 of a second behind Josh Atkinson ahead. In front of him it looks like the leading duo has cleared off. Glenn Harrison is now three and a half seconds down the road and Anthony Cece three seconds down the road so my faint hopes of a race win appear to have evaporated here but I am still well in contention to go one better than race one and grab a podium I've just got the small matter of Josh Atkinson in front of me and Romani and Etta behind me and as we approach the end of lap two thankfully there's a little bit more of a gap back to me and Etta this time so he's not going to be in a position to make a move up the inside into turn one. Oh, look at Atkinson ahead he's just a touch wide Excellent in Paddock Hill Bend, clipped the gravel on the outside, wow. Ionetta incoming, I just saw a very late lunge in my rear view mirror, so I've got to leave him space on the inside, but there's contact anyway, and we have both spun out, oh this is rotten luck, one moment I was in a battle for a podium, now I'm rejoining down in 7th position by the looks of it, but I've picked up damage as well, what a disaster, well yeah, really controversial incident this one, Ionetta felt that I was to blame, he thought I should have left him more space, but honestly, I don't think I did a lot wrong. We're riding on board with Ionetta now, and it's a late move up the inside into Druids. As soon as I knew he was there, I left him space on the inside, but then he moves to the outside, and that's what causes the contact. So yeah, I honestly felt like I left him enough room on the inside here, but watch his exit from the corner. He doesn't stick to that inside line. He moves over to the left, even though we're still side by side, and there's nothing I can do about it. Another look from the chopper cam. I mean, I could have backed down, I suppose, but I wanted to stay side by side with him because I knew I'd have the higher ground for the upcoming left-hander into Graham Hill Bend. But ultimately it was a regrettable incident, one that has ruined both of our races. One final look then and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Did I leave him enough room? Should I have backed out? Was I to blame? Let me know in the comments below. Well, I certainly wasn't ready to give up. We're not even at one-third race distance yet. We've still got more than 10 laps to go. So there's a very good chance I could yet get one or two positions back. And I'm going to get one of them back straight away because Yasuki Suzuki has sent it into the barrier coming out of Sterling's. Well, in actual fact, the mistake started at the Sheen Curve. He's out onto the grass there, which will mean dirty tyres. Less grip going through Sterling's. Out onto the grass a second time and loses control. Well, that promoted me up into sixth, and then a lap later, I was going to get fifth. This is Rico Van Basten, currently lying in fourth position, getting it all wrong at Graham Hill Bend. So, yeah, it certainly paid to stick with it because I find myself back into the top five with a third of the race still to go. Yellow flags are out. Unfortunately, it's a back marker. However, the battle for the lead of this race is about to get physical. I've switched on the TV cam. Glenn Harrison still leading the way, but his advantage has been wiped out by Anthony Cece. Cece is on a charge here. He's picked up a toe. Harrison's going to go defensive into turn one, forcing Cece out wide, and there's a bit of contact. Cece out into the gravel. Can he save? It. No, he can't. Now the big question is, can he get back on track before I get past? I'm into Paddock Hill Bend now. There's CC in front and I am going to get 
they're past him, so that is another position gained. I find myself up into P4. Well, by the time CC got back on track and back up to racing speed, he was more than three seconds behind me. However, would that be a big enough gap for me to hold on to this fourth position over the final four laps? The answer simply, I don't know. CC has been half a second a lap quicker than me each lap, and he is now half a second behind with one lap to go. You do the math. This one is going to the wire. We can see just how close CC is now, not just from my rear view mirror, but also from the TV cam, which is showing CC's on board. Well, I came into this race hopeful of a podium. That hasn't materialized, but can I match my result from race one? Can I hold on to this fourth position? Oh, wait a minute. Josh Atkinson has gone. Atkinson rejoined him from the right, but I've managed to creep past up into third position. Well, just as I was saying, my hopes for podium hadn't materialized. They have reappeared. And all of a sudden, this fight with CC is for the final podium position. Well, I did have a momentary panic as Atkinson rejoined. I lifted ever so slightly just to make sure I could get past safely. I did wonder if that might give CC an advantage, but he is still 0.4 of a second back as we come into Hawthorns for the final time. Well, I'm only half a lap from home now, but never has the Brands Hatch finish line felt so far away. I'm driving with damage. I'm trying to hold off the fastest driver on track, and I'm going to have to produce a flawless lap if I'm going to cling on to this third position. My previous lap was actually my fastest lap of the race, a 124.8. However, that is a good six or seven tenths slower than the lap times I was managing in race one. However, it looks like it might just be enough. Look how hard CC is pushing into clearways. He has really thrown it in there. He's got two tyres out onto the grass. And with that, I have held on to third position. Wow, what an intense finale to the race. I am on the podium. Who would have thought that after that third lap collision with Ionetta? But before we check out the classified results, let's just see what happened to Josh Atkinson. Oh, he clips the grass, excellent Druids. And that mistake from Atkinson gifted me the podium I thought had disappeared. Here are the classified results then, and there I am in third place. Unfortunately, the damage picked up in that collision with Ionetta meant I was down on pace for the majority of this race. But while I couldn't manage to match the 124.2 lap times I was doing in race one, I did go one better where it counted on the leaderboard. Once again, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again on the grid very soon. Cheers.